everybody, thanks for checking out my channel. Uh, if you're new here, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. We'd love to have you come back. And uh, if you find this content useful or interesting, go ahead and give us a thumbs up and, uh, and like the content. So today, I'm actually going to show you a industrial ethernet switch from Cisco. We're gonna unbox it. I wanna show you what comes in the box, how we get the thing mounted, what other components we need to get the, the system running, and uh, ultimately, um, you know, kind of go from there. I have some other videos coming where we're going to really just see how tough this unit actually is, so stay tuned for that content as well. Anyway, without saying a whole lot more about that, let's go ahead and open this up and see what the thing looks like. So initially, when you open the box, there is a uh, product documentation and compliance information. This document talks about proper mounting, grounding, and so forth. Uh, grounding in particular is really important in an industrial environment because of additional shock and electrical currents that might be floating around out there. Uh, definitely take a look at this document. Next, you see the foam that the unit is packaged in. We can pull this out. The switch, as you can see, is wrapped in plastic. So there it is. That is the Industrial Ethernet uh, 2000 series switch. Uh, you can see it has some ports on the front. There are four downlink ports, if you will, for end devices, PLCs, or different systems. Uh, and there are two uplink ports, also copper ports in this case. You can get this unit in uh, you know, expanded port counts as well as uh, SFP slots for fiber uplinks or, uh, or the like. So uh, anyway, there's also a console port, as you can see, kind of the traditional console port. There's also a cover over a USB console port. So uh, depending on what uh, generation of console cable you have, you're good to go either way. Next, there are uh, two power connectors. So this will do redundant power. Now, from a power perspective, this does not have an internal power supply. There's also not a power supply in the box. So you have to order the power supply separately. Uh, or, you know, you can take power from uh, an industrial power supply that might be in the same cabinet as the switch is ultimately mounted in. So a couple things to consider there. There is an alarm, set of alarm terminals. The alarm terminals, I actually have another video on this that you're welcome to check out, but the alarm terminals can be used to uh, say there's a fault with the switch. You can have a relay trip that lights a light, a buzzer, a bell, whatever. You can also have uh, maybe the door of the cabinet trigger an alarm on the switch when the door is open or something like that. Maybe, uh, you know, some environmental sensor can send an alert through the switch itself. The SD card uh, slot here folds down and there's an SD card in there that is used for the configuration. So in the instance where you have someone in the field who's going to go replace this, you can send them a replacement unit, they take it out, they uh, pop the card out, pop it in the new system, it'll boot up and uh, be ready to run from there. So no real uh, field configuration required, you just swap the card and go from there. On the back of the unit, you can kind of see the, uh, the DIN rail mount there. This tab will snap down to allow this to snap onto a DIN rail which you would probably have in most industrial cabinets. DIN rail mounting specifically is pretty straightforward. This is a DIN rail, just a short piece of it. You can see the contour of it from the side and from the front. It has slotted holes. This is going to be mounted to the uh, back of a panel through these slotted holes, and the slotted holes give you, you know, mounting flexibility. Uh, and then from here, once it's mounted, the devices simply snap onto the rail. Now you'll see that it's, uh, we can see that 
it's uh, pushed out a little bit, you simply push the switch back on to the DIN rail. It will take a little pressure and it will snap on something like that. It's a little harder to do when it's not on a, uh, an actual panel. Uh, and then the switch latches on. To remove it, you simply pull down on this lever. Sometimes you have to do it with a screwdriver and the DIN rail releases. Now there's a couple reasons why we use this uh, because this DIN rail will be mounted to the panel, which is grounded. And if you see the switch has a little uh, tab there that ensures pressure against the DIN rail so that it is also grounded. Uh, now, of course, that doesn't mean you shouldn't be using the grounding tab on the front. It just gives you a, another ground for, you know, electrical safety. I mentioned that this system doesn't come with a power supply. However, there are a number of power supplies that you can order from Cisco to address the power needs. Uh, one is this one. So a little bit older. This takes an AC plug and a screw terminal, which I have some screw terminals connected to some scrap wire I had. Uh, plugs into one, plugs into the terminal on the switch, and that's how the DC power is provided. Uh, this has an AC plug, so it'll work with your standard PC or switch power cord. Um, another option is this 170 watt power supply, which has screw terminals for the AC line in as well. So in a panel, you may have AC just, you know, on raw connectors. You can connect that here. It does have a shield on it to prevent, you know, any type of accidental uh, arcing or anything of that nature. Uh, and then it has DC outputs as well. So same type of thing, you connect your DC wires up there and then ultimately over to the switch. Another option is a DC power supply or DC input. So this is, uh, you know, DC in and it changes the voltage to suit the needs of the switch itself. Probably not as common in most applications, but also an option. So the, the uh, part numbers of these are on the screen. I'll put the part numbers in the uh, description of this video and some links to data sheets as well. Hopefully that's been a useful introduction to the IE2000. I'm going to take a look at a couple other industrial switches here over the next couple of weeks. Uh, I'm also going to uh, maybe put this thing to the test, see how tough these devices really are. So stay tuned for that. It should be a good time. Uh, I'm also possibly dive into the software and configuration. They are very functionally similar to catalyst switches, but there are some other features that you're not going to get in the catalyst world as well. So let me know what you want to see next. And I uh, want to thank you for watching.